fun. Okay. Um, we are here with Ben. Ben, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Ben. This is Mark, Tara. We're the owners of Vintage Cellars here in Great Falls, Montana. And Ben is the head brewmaster at Breakside in Portland, um, Oregon. And yeah. He's joined us today um, just kind of to talk about, we've got five beers to talk about, but we kind of want to start with maybe the, tell us about the brewery, maybe your background and how the brewery started, where it got its name, whatever other interesting things you want to talk about. Yeah. Well, first off, thanks for having me all. Very excited yeah, sure. to do this as part of your, uh, one of your earliest beer clubs. Sounds super fun. Um, so yeah, Breakside's been around 10 years. We are now in 2020. Well, pre-pandemic, we were about a 30,000 barrel year brewery. Uh, the pandemic set us back a little bit, but we're growing back to where we were. So we're kind of a regional brewery, uh, but we began in 2010 as a small little brew pub with just a three barrel brew house serving beer really just on site at our own brew pub. Um, about two years in, we opened up a production brewery. The aspiration from Scott Lawrence was the majority owner still and the, one of the founders was always that we would have a brewery that would eventually grow into being doing some distribution. So we took the leap in uh, 2012, signed the lease on a giant warehouse of about 25,000 square feet, um, built out a production brewery and started getting into the, you know, uh, distribution game, um, putting our beer out a little further and far, you know, far and wide, uh, mainly in Oregon and then in Washington. And over the next few years, we kind of grew by adding our beer uh, in adjacent states. Montana is actually a relatively recent addition for us. I think we started distributing Montana in early 2019, so just about a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, and we just kind of grew over time. I think we were at that, on a little bit on the early side of that wave of really the biggest, the most recent like spurt of growth for a uh, growth spurt for, for craft beer. Um, we specialize in IPAs and, but also do a wide, wide range of different styles. I read down on, on the website or somewhere, maybe an interview I saw that you, you were a home brewer. You didn't, uh, and then just decided this, you wanted that to be a profession. Is that kind of your background? Yeah, yeah. I went, um, I had been a home brewer for many years and decided that I wanted to try and make a transition to being, you know, a professional brewer. So I went to brewing school, uh, got a job at a small brewery, uh, another brewery here in town for a little bit. And then uh, I met Scott and we, he offered me the position of, you know, running this tiny little brewery uh, that he was planning to open. And somehow I've just hung on for the next 10 years and here I am still. Cool. And what's Scott's background? Uh, he was a sales guy, so neither of us had any uh, beer industry background. Um, or a restaurant. But, it's a restaurant too, isn't it? Yeah, there is a restaurant. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, no, and not really restaurant guys either. So there was a lot of mistakes we learned from early on. Fortunately, I think we had our heart and kind of uh, in the right place, and we were not hitting too far off the target early on. And uh, yeah, we've we've made it work. And learned a lot. Yeah, you guys won. What was it? IPA of the year, the best IPA in American IPA or something? What was that about? 2014 at the Great American Fe uh, Beer Festival, we won gold uh, for our India Pale Ale. It was the largest category in the history of GABF at the time. Um, that was for breaks at IPA. And then actually three years later, we uh, won a bronze medal in that same category for breaks at IPA. So that beer has uh, kind of defied the odds twice and it's our uh, best selling beer. It's our flagship beer um, and one that we are very, very proud of. Tell us about the restaurant situation in Portland now during this pandemic. Are you guys allowed to have anybody in the, in the tasting rooms or in the restaurants? Yeah, we're in, in what is called phase one reopening, at least it's the Oregon, the state of Oregon's uh, nomenclature for it. And so we can have um, parties of up to 10, uh, socially distanced. You know, we're doing mainly outdoor dining still, but uh, the winter in the Northwest is pretty rainy. So we're trying to adjust to uh, what it'll be like to having people indoors more. All right, same thing here, kind of. Well, we're allowed up to, yeah, we, we got a 50% occupancy, so we're a little bit better off. That's great. Well, should we start with the beers? Start talking about the first one I think you wanted us to do was, um, was the gold. Yeah, true gold. true gold. So true gold is a year round beer from us. In fact, I think uh, four of the five beers you guys are gonna taste through are uh, year round beers from us. Um, this is one that we've made now for about two and a half years, and the idea was that it's a really just easy drinking, everyday gold nail, right around 5% alcohol with just a kiss of hop flavor. Um, nothing, too, nothing too difficult about it, nothing too 
uh, complex about it, really just a nicely executed, dry, lightly hoppy beer that is kind of an everyday, everyday slugger. There's in, lots of interesting labels. You must have a, is it an artist you work with or different artists? We have an in-house creative designer, but that art, that label was designed by um, a different person at the time, who we were working with at the time. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's cool. That's very good. I think, like you said, easy drinking, probably, you know, lots of foods with this. You, you know, I think you could, it's pretty, very, um, uh, pretty easily adaptable, I think, to lots of different flavors. So. I mean, yeah, and you know, we make a lot of different beers, some of which I think are more aggressive in terms of their flavor profile that are meant to kind of stop you and make you think about, oh, what hop character is this? Or what is, you know, what is the, how does this beer work? This is one that really is meant to, it's a, it's a drinking beer. It's a uh, beer beer. It's, you know, it's meant to be the social lubricant, not to be the center of conversation kind of thing. <laughs> right. Perfect. Let's move on to a Pilsner. Maybe you could tell us, we're more wine people. We're just kind of learning about beer. So tell us the difference between or what a pilsner means. Why is it called a pilsner? Yeah, so pilsner is a, it's a lager beer. So that's going to be one of the, that's probably the biggest difference from all the other beers you guys are going to taste through today. Lagers, of course, are made with a different yeast strain than ales. And so uh, unlike ale strains, they tend to ferment at cooler temperatures. They produce a different set of kind of flavor byproducts um, and they just act a little bit differently. It's kind of like working with two different, uh, yeah, just two different uh, microorganisms to produce the beers. And in this case, um, Pilsner is specifically a very light, dry and hop forward version of a lager uh, originating in the Czech Republic in the 1840s. Ours is a German version, um, which tends to be a little bit drier, a little bit uh, more hop flavor forward and a little bit higher bitterness than the Czech versions are, and also a little lower alcohol. So, so are you exactly using German hops then, or what's the German? Yeah, we, we use German malt, German hops. There's also one American hop that we use in here called Liberty, uh, which is a American grown version of a German hop. It's been crossed, a uh, German hop crossed with uh, a wild American hop many years ago. So right. yeah, it's the, uh, you know, Pilsner, I, I think bloggers for a long time uh, in general in, in the U.S. had a bad rep because they were viewed as kind of like industrial beer, right? And in the last 10 years, that's really started to change. Um, people have come to see that, you know, lagers are the best-selling beer in the world for a reason, Pilsner specifically. And I actually think that for IPA lovers, Pilsner is a very easy lager to migrate over to because the hop character and the bitterness are there. Um, the dryness is there. And so it's a really easy slide. And this, for many years, this is our uh, number one selling beer. Yeah, that's good. Very nice. So we'll move on to the rainbows. Is that what it is? Rainbows and unicorns. unicorn IPA? Rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. This is one of our uh, top three selling beers. This is a beer that right now is available in 12 ounce uh, six packs. It's going to be in 12 ounce cans uh, in 2021. This is a kind of, uh, I won't call it a session IPA, but it's a lower alcohol IPA. It's around five and a half percent. It's definitely more hoppy than a pale ale. Um, and it uses a really cool uh, blend of hops featuring pretty heavily Galaxy, which is a really hard to get Australian hop. Um, probably one of the most prized hops that's out there. And it gives it this very distinctive kind of like kiwi, Mm -hmm. uh, tarragon stone fruit aroma to it that's really hard to get from any other hop. We Lots combine of fruit. that, yeah, I like it. Yeah, with El Dorado, which is very pineapple and Comet, which is very peachy. So, combining some Australian and American hops in there, um, it's really low out. Uh, sorry, it's really low bitterness, uh, in terms of like just the number of bittering units in there. And really, it's meant to be kind of a again, a light, easy drinking IPA that's full of hop flavor, but not very, very bitter. Yeah, it's very drinkable. I agree. Sometimes they get over the top for those of us neophytes that aren't used to big, bittery beers. So, right? yeah, fine. I think that that's something that brewers have gotten a lot better at in the last 12 years, not just us, but I think as an industry as a whole, is that, you know, people used to jam a lot of hops into beers in order to get hop flavor and aroma. But in doing that, they also got all this kind of bitterness alongside it. And I think brewers have learned how to get maximize aroma and flavor of hops, which are very pleasant, while keeping that bitterness at a balanced level um, over the last 12 years. And that's been a really fun uh, progression to see both for our own beers and others. Yeah. So what do you drink when you don't drink a beer? When I don't drink any Wine beer? or whiskey or? 
Oh yeah, if I'm at home and not having a beer, I'll probably have I'll probably have wine. I, I'm not a huge. Uh, I, I love spirits, but honestly, since COVID started, I haven't really been having that many cocktails. I don't have like a great home bar or anything. I have a few bottles of stuff, but for the most part, um, yeah, if it's not going to be beer, it's wine. But I, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm an unabashed beer nerd. I love beer still to this day. I don't think I could do my job at least not well, if I didn't really still love beer, not just our beer, but other people's beer. I'm picky about it, but you know, I love, I, I'm just lo gonna gravitate toward beer every time. Yeah, cool. I'm the same way with wine, but I'm trying to get out of a little bit of that, get into yeah. the beer world songs. Um, how about Stay West, should we move on to that one? Yeah, so here you go. This is now gonna be kind of your classic West Coast IPA. And when I was talking a minute ago about how I think IPAs have evolved this is a really good example of one that I think maybe 10 years ago would have been brewed and would have had a lot of bitterness, a lot more bitterness. Now I think you make this beer and it's got a ton of, uh, of kind of lemongrass and pineapple and grapefruit and sweet pine in the nose. And it seems like it's gonna hit you with this bitterness, but it pulls back the last second. And so you get this kind of sweet, rich, satiating hot character across the palate kind of a juicy fruit impact. That's from the use of El Dorado as the main hop in that beer, but we also use a good bit of Centennial, which is an old school uh, public domain hop. We use some Simcoe in that beer um, to give it a little bit of cattiness and a little bit of like kind of dank edge. But yeah, the idea is that this is kind of a, a classic West Coast IPA done with a modern sensibility. Yeah, nice. Again, you're right. It's just not the bitterness that I'm used to, at least in some of these IPAs. It's nice. Yeah. It makes it a little bit more drinkable, allows that, I think that when that bitterness gets dropped down, you allow that hop flavor to cross the palate more so it stays longer, right? I think sometimes when you're using bitter, when bitterness is too high, it kind of just like jumps forward and grabs the palate and rips out the hop flavor too early. And when you have a more balanced level of BUs in a beer uh, and a really nicely made beer with a lot of hops, you see all that flavor kind of carry across the tongue from front to back. And it should be kind of one nice, you know, aroma, flavor, body, all integrated into one kind of experience. Like a big, rich, heavy European cheese, creamy one yeah. with this. I think that'd be awesome. Because it'd uh, be kind of like cleansing the palate, you know? So I think that'd be a good... Yeah. We have one called Telegio in our store, and it's it's a great cheese. That It's from uh, Northern Italy, and it, it would, it, I think it pair perfectly with this beer. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you been to Montana, Ben? Uh, I have. It's been many years. I've driven across Montana, uh, but it's probably been... That takes a while. Yeah, it did take a while. It, that was, <laughs> it's probably been 15 years. You know, I, I spend a... Oh, no, that's not true. It's, it's not far off, though. I guess that was 15 years ago now. Yeah, 15 years or so. Cool. Well, last Jacob but not least, the Brent Indian Brent. Golden Ale. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no, I was going to say Jacob Leonard is our director of brewing operations. His wife is from Billings originally, oh. uh, and her family's there. So they go to Billings a couple times a year. So I actually know a lot of Montana brewers and have, you know, had a lot of the beers. I just don't ever actually get to Montana myself. Yeah, there's, we have a ton of breweries for our, for our population base. There's, yeah. For capita, I'll bet it's high. And quite good breweries, too. Yeah, well, you're always welcome. We do beer tastings and stuff. So anytime you want to come out during the summer months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love skiing. I don't really get to ski out here. I lived in Colorado for many years. And, you know, this you're kind of spoiled when you're in the central Rockies, right? I mean, I'm sure as you all know. And like, right. so I, I kind of have dropped off skiing because I just don't find the, the terrain out here to be as enjoyable. Um, and a lot heavier snow too, heavy wet snow, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. It's heavier. You don't get that kind of champagne powder that you get in the Intermountain snowpack. Right. And uh, yeah, anyways, I, I should come out in the winter and get back onto skiing. Yeah, there you go. Well, we, we got 15 inches of snow yesterday or two Dang. days ago, I guess. Really? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It was dumped on us. Yeah. So, anyways. All yeah. right, let's go on to that last one. The uh, right, Indian last year is India Golden Ale, which is where, uh, it's, the name's a little deceiving, but it's a double IPA. Um, this is a 8% beer that's very dry, very hoppy. And again, uh, we try and keep the bitterness in check to allow that hop flavor uh, to really carry through. So in this, you should be getting, uh, it's three main hops uh, featured here, Mosaic, Chinook, and Eldorado. Um, 
So in this case, I think a ton of juicy fruit. Again, pineapple is kind of a dominant character. There's going to be some sweet pine and grapefruit from the Chinook. Uh, yeah, the, the alcohol pine, really yeah. helps push this beer up, right? You're going to get an 8% in very dry beer. You know, you're going to find that there's going to be some alcohol warming in there and some alcohol lifts. So some of the character you're going to taste in the beer is not just hop derived, but also uh, booze derived. Um, and yeah, there's a nice underlying tropical fruit, overripe fruit kind of character. Uh, that I think you'd get when you have these heavily hopped beers that are also quite high alcohol. Yeah, this is, you can definitely feel the bitterness on this one more. Yeah. Than they need the rest of them. Yeah, that's, you know, I think that in these, in this case, the BUs have to stay a little higher in order to uh, offset the sweetness that you get from the alcohol and mouthfeel pickup you get from the alcohol. Great. Well, thank you very much, Ben. It's been a pleasure and it's nice to meet you virtually. Hopefully we'll yeah, get it. Tell us a little bit about your, you have, was it three restaurant brew pubs or two, mm -hmm. three? We have three locations um, and three breweries. So there's, there's brewery on site at each location. Two of them are full restaurants. Uh, and then one is just, it has a tap room. And so they're all, uh, they're all within about 20 minutes of each other in, in Portland. Our uh, production brewery is just south of town uh, in the first suburb. And uh, the two pubs, brew pubs are both in Portland proper. All right. Well, thanks very much. We'll try to make it out there as soon as all this stuff settles down a little bit. Would love to host you out here sometime. So yeah, thanks for uh, the opportunity. And it's been a pleasure chatting with y'all. You too. Thank See you. you later. See you guys. Bye. Bye.